Hi, for this recording, we are particularly interested to find the answer for part C of question 7. That is, suppose V1 is 111, V2 is 1 minus 2, 1. We, are, we have shown that V1 and V2 are perpendicular in R3. And in part B, we also find a vector V3, which is perpendicular to both V1 and V2. So now we are answer part C now. Express a vector x, y, z as a linear combination of v1, v2, and v3. Okay, so let's look at some uh, result first. Uh, this is from David Lay. It says, suppose u1 to up is an orthogonal basis for w in Rn. Then for each y in w, y can be expressed as a linear combination of orthogonal basis u1 to up given this expression. However, if you can remember this expression, that is good. If you cannot, find a still simple way to find out the expression. Now let's look at the solution. From the earlier part, we have find that given V1 is 111, V2 is 1 minus 2, 1, and V3, we have found out that is half to low minus half in our earlier part in part A and B. So now, because V1 and V2, V3 are orthogonal to each other. So V1, V2, V3 form an orthogonal basis for R3. Therefore, if we are given any vector u, say u is a vector x, y, z in R3, then u can be expressed as a linear combination of V1, V2, and V3. That means u is equal to alpha than V1, plus beta times V2, plus gamma times V3, where alpha, beta, gamma are some numbers. And this alpha, beta, gamma can be uniquely determined. And so we have a vector equation. To find alpha, beta, gamma, in general, we are going to solve a three equation with three unknown. And we may take some row operation or metric inverse. However, this time, we are going to take advantage of orthogonality. How do we do that? Let's write down the equation again. I'm going to show you how to find alpha. Now to find alpha, alpha is a coefficient of 1, 1, 1. So what you're going to do is take the top product everywhere with 1, 1, 1. And you're going to find out alpha by this way. So take the top product with 1, 1, 1, each and every term. Take the top product with 1, 1, 1. Now, when you take the dot product, the left hand side will give you x plus y plus z after you do the dot product, right? x times 1, you get x, y times 1, you get y, and z times 1, you get z. Okay, so this is how you get the left hand side. And on the right hand side, uh, 1 times 1, you get 1. And then 1 times 1, you get 1 again. And then 1 times 1, you get 1 again. Add together, you get 3. So you're going to get 3 alpha. And the term, second term in the dot product, you know the dot product is equal to 0 because they are orthogonal. And also the third term is also 0 because they are orthogonal. Therefore, straight away you know alpha. In this case, is x plus y plus z over 3. This is how you find alpha by taking the top product with everybody using 1, 1, 1. All right. Now, let's look at how do I find beta now. Similar argument. To find beta, beta is a coefficient of 1 minus 2, 1. So you take the scalar product with 1 minus 2, 1 for every term. So that means that you're going to take scalar product with 1 minus 2, 1. And dot with 1 minus 2, 1. And dot with 1 minus 2, 1. And dot with y minus 2, 1. 
Now when you do a dot product, just like what I did just now, so the first term you get x here, and the second term you get minus 2y. Alright, and then the third term you are going to get z on the left hand side. Now on the right hand side, you'll find that the second term you're going to get 1 times 1, you get 1, minus 2 times minus 2, you get 4, and 1 times 1, you get 1, so all together you're going to get 6 beta. And notice that the first term, when you do a dot product, this is going to be 0, because the vector 1, 1, 1, and 1, minus 2, 1 are orthogonal, and also the third term also 0, because half 0 minus half and 1 minus 2, 1 are orthogonal, the top product is 0. That means that beta in this case is equal to x minus 2y plus z over 6. Next, the find gamma. So the one to find out where is the gamma here. So you take the dot product again. This time, gamma is the coefficient of half 0 minus half. Alright? So take the product with half 0 minus half everywhere for every term. So you get dot product of half 0 minus half. And the product of half zero minus half, the product of half zero minus half, and the product of half zero minus half. Every term. And then on the left hand side, first term, you get half x plus zero y and minus half z. So the left hand side, you get minus half z here. In the end, so we get minus half z and half x and minus plus the low on the left hand side. So this is what you get on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, especially the last term, you'll have half times half, you get one quarter. 0 times 0, you get 0, minus one half times minus half, you get 1 quarter again. So all together, 1 quarter plus 1 quarter is half, so this is half gamma. And for the first two terms, you'll find that the dot product is equal to 0, because the two vectors are the corner. Second term also, the product is 0. So that means that I find out what is gamma now. So gamma is equal to, after dividing by half, you get x minus z. Right? So this is how I find the alpha, beta, gamma. So put the alpha and beta, gamma together. So x, y, z is alpha times 1, 1, 1. So that means this is equal to alpha is x plus y plus z over 3. And beta is x minus 2y plus z over 6. And the gamma is happen to be x minus z. And we have expressed x, y, z as a linear combination of v1, v2, v3. That is the end of the recording.